A ghost's last laugh. Pelaine Ludwell. The last thing that old Hadesy said to his lawyer, Horatio Pennypacker, was, Get the ghost, understand, I want Killer Castle, of course. Every stone of it, but the ghost is no good without the ghost. And even the old millionaire, multimillionaire, had looked at Pennypacker from the bent breath beneath fierce brows and snarled as always. Don't care how you do it, just see that you do it. And don't come back without the ghost, Pennypacker. So that was that. You, when you have worked for a very wealthy man for about all, for almost thirty years, he gives you an order. You try your best to do it. So Horatio Packer Packer went to Scotland to purchase Camilla Castle and fetch it back to America piece by piece. Old Hennessy thought it would look fine overlooking the Hudson. He ever dreamt the ghosts might not care much about American millionaires or orders they gave. Poor little Pennypacker found out the hard way. He ride a kinemere on a gusty night snow, flinging down for the islands. It's black and cold. Castle nine hundred years old, brooded, like the sombre Gothic ruin it was. Telegram was delayed but for some reason. Mr. Pennypacker found no one that had seen him but an ancient gilly, who looked as though he might have been the original owner. But he was friendly enough. He took Mr. Pennypacker into a great fire roaring in the fireplace, so long, long as a freight car gave him a hot drink, for long they were great friends. It was about then that Mr. Pennypacker began to suspect his task would not be so easy. The old man was named Ben. As soon as Mr. Pennypacker mentioned the ghost, Ben said, You have a job here, there, ma'am. I didn't think the ghost of Road Campbell would go across the ocean. This has been his home, near kin for high nigh six hundred years. The Cranwells were always home, loving folk. Castle you take down, put it up against again in America. If his millionaire is foolish enough to spend the pounds, be a fine red Campbell, a different matter. Mister Pennypacker was thunderstruck. Such a possibility never occurred to him. He winced at the bare thought of cabling all hurry. They uh, had a bulky, bulky ghost on their hands. He knew that had to see. Heart was set on the go- that ghost. But how can it be? He asked the gilly. I never think a ghost could go wherever it. I, I think a ghost would go wherever his or her house goes. Castle in this case, don't they have to live somewhere? The gilly nodded and pulled at his cake briar pipe. Most do, he agreed, but ye yeah, tell ye, the Red Campbell's none of your only ghosts. The old man put his pipe at Mr. Pennypacker. Do ye not kin the story of Red Campbell? The lawyer nodded. From the books, yes, he was a famous, or a, do I mean infamous, robber and founderer, hanging right here in the court, his castle. Did they not? Gilly nodded. They did that. That's what, the why of it. I tell ye, they didn't have to hang Red Campbell only once, you see. Three times they hang, hang her here. And three times the gullet rope melted in the flames as, as each of the times he got away to rob and murder some poor folk, poor folk. Then the mayor caught himself, himself right, caught Fred, and hung him with a silver chain. He is dead for sure. He is dead for sure, Mr. Pennypacker was impressed. The mayor? The builder of the castle. Ben nodded. Aye, he was a great chief in his time. It was he that funny did for Red Campbell. He was a silence whilst Mr. Pennypecker stared in a great fire. What makes you so sure the ghost of Red Campbell wasn't co- won't come to America? I didn't say I was sure, said Ben. I didn't think it was likely. You must, underst- you must understand that Red Campbell was a great man for great gold, for silver too, for matter, no, for that matter, even even pennies. Mister Pennypacker considered a moment. You mean he's a miser? Never heard of such a thing. What use could a ghost have for money? The old man prodded him gently with a pipe. Use your wits, man. This is a Scottish ghost. We're discussing. Of course, that makes a difference. Agreed, Mister Pennypacker. But. 
Do get back to the money, that loot. I suppose, did you mean Red Campbell has got all the wealth hidden somewhere in the castle? Ben nodded. This is, that be the story, mister. The old man, lawyers, crowded in triumph, crowded in triumph. Then there's a problem, won't, don't, there's no problem, don't you see? We'll just move. The castle and the money on Ben Campbell have to go him along or lose his gold. It's simple. Ben shook his head dourly. If you don't let, if it, it's, it's you, that simple man. Ben Campbell will never let you live to tear down the castle. More or less, he's just bought it, it pulled. Anyway, the tales have it that the gold is buried in the floor of the dungeons. Will you yeah, take the earth also? Miss Magpanny lips compressing a thin line. Mm, in the dungeons, I see. He stopped by the, up to Termaly. There's only one thing to do. But, Ben, I must talk to Red Campbell immediately. We can settle this thing, man, to a ghost. Ben pointed through an archway, yawned blackly. Through there we ye find stair. Leading down to the dungeons, ye forgive an old man for not going with thee. It's not the... These stormy nights that Red looks his worse. Ten years later, Mr. Pennypecker knew what old Ben said meant. He had come down a long way into a dank, bat infested dungeon beneath the castle. His only light was a flickering candle. He turned, and there he was, Red Campbell. Is it even worse than old Ben had imagined? Ben Campbell was a huge man. He wore rusty armour, carried a great claymore that dipped blood in the dank, on the dank stones. A dank, dipped blood on the dank stones. His eyes wide pinpoints that was swell brimstone about him. But worst of all was the voice, his voice. He spoke, the great wolf howling through the dun- dungeons. He howled now as Mr. Peggy Packer. You had no bargain about we had no bargain out of me. So I stay in Kilimar. He put a claymore. A legal lawyer. A blood dipped to the steady used to flow at Sam. And my gold stays with me, howled Mid Campbell. It took a step towards the lawyer and blew a brimstone, brimstone at him. Do you know? Do you go now and tell your master? For a moment, Mr. Pennypacker was on the verge of flight. Do you remember the old hideaway he's five? And said, to his ground, Mr. Redpucker was well, Grandpa was kind of terrible, but Mr. Pennypacker's boss was worse. In that moment, inspiration came to him. If it is money you're after, he said, old oh, ghost, maybe we can come to business yet. At uh, the look of the interest of Red's face, he hurried on. I'll get you a sign, you contract, he said. We'll guarantee you do not disturb your gold. With addition, we'll pay you a salary. Anything reasonable, of course, the little red eyes. The ghost narrowed. Now, what's your idea reasonable? Mr. Pennypacker felt a elation still through him. His boss would be willing to be still, would be willing to go high for a ghost for horrible as Red Campbell. Still, he felt the caution growing in him. No use throwing money away. Let's say a hundred a week and expenses, told the ghost. A look on Red Campbell, but face. He added hastily, and all, and you're bald, of course. And all the blood you can drink. Ed Campbell sat down an ancient beheading block and moaned. It's me, and it's me, he called the robber. He said he looked at Mr. Pennypuck, his secretary, banished his sword. Look at me, he shouted. Did you just see anything here more disgusting, more horrible, bloody sword and all? Mr. Pennypuck shuddered. No, I never did, Red Campbell. But you, how about it? Will you come to America? Red Campbell seemed to grow even larger. His face turned black and sparks flew about his eyes. Not a poultry sum like that. For a poultry, not for no poultry sum like that, he roared. I'll take a thousand a week, no less. Speak quietly, man. It is a bargain. It's too much. Mr. Pecker, Mr. Pennypacker knew it. Even his boss would not pay so mu- that much. He barely... As he, uh, as badly wanted the ghost, he about to admit defeat, when another inspiration came to him. It's deep, leap and dark, I guess, but it might just work. Mr. Pennypacker turned on his heel. All right, he said coldly. Stay here and rot, Red Campbell, but you're not fooling anyone, because I know you haven't got any treasure. This is a, this is just a part of the tall story of growing up around this place. You're really as poor as that mouse, as a mice. 
But he wants to be turned down a hundred a week. That's your business. He knew he'd won. Where Campbell sank to the floor, moanly, slowly, softly himself. Tears fell down his eyes, splashed on the stones. He's a beaten ghost. You're all right. You were very good. Give me your paper. I sign and curse the day I ever saw you. Mr. Pennypacker whipped a contract with pocket. Stand right here, he commanded. No, don't use ink. No, no, you think, not the blood on your sword. I want to be sure that it will stand up in court, the end.